What is going on, people? You know, it's um, this wasn't supposed to be happening, but I decided to do this live stream tonight. It's a rainy night in Georgia. Trump people are mad everywhere. And I was talking to my cousin. And I, I got on the theme of this, this topic of how your parents screw you up. Because... I'm just going to put the business out there. I have a sibling that I don't talk to. And you know how bill collectors be calling all around the family tree to try to find this person. They call me and I haven't talked to this girl in years. I don't know what she's doing. Don't care. Don't really dwell on that. And I'm starting to look at what happened to me versus what happened to them. I had, my grandmother was my mother. I had a college educated mother who taught me to read before I went to school. A lot of kids don't have that. A lot of kids don't even know what that looks like. Don't know what that feels like. And essentially during my formative years, I was in a two parent household with a college educated mother. This is no fluke that I'm successful. This is no accident. And I look at the other two who didn't have that. And one of them has bill ch collectors chasing her. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to put the business out there. When she was in law school, she won a million dollars. And here it is about 15 years later. She got bill, bill collectors chasing her. because She don't know how to manage money. And I'm just sitting here laughing. Like I remember when the lady called me and I was like, I don't know where the bitch is. That was my thought process. That's how I answered it. And so she just like sent me some stuff so they could stop calling me. But. One of the things that I want to bring up, all right, Victor, to you folks is stop being average. Average is going to jack up your kids. They'll be like everyone else. You know, thank you, Howard. They'll be like everyone else, but they, they will be not achieving much in life. Oh, let me go ahead and put this in here to the chick who left the comment, didn't want me, who, 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 who made some critical wrong analysis about me and my dating life. Well, Glendon, you appear to be dating the same chick. You have not listened to all of my videos. You don't know what you're talking about. And I left a comment in there because my ex sent me a text apologizing for screwing up the relationship. I see you haven't responded to that because women don't like to take accountability. Women don't like to be responsible. This is why your trick butt tried to blame me and left her out the equation when she was the one that was messing up the relationship. So go ahead and answer that. And I'm expecting a, I'm sorry if you have honor and dignity, which more than likely you don't because you weren't raised right. That's my message to you, to that individual. Because uh, a lot of folks be coming on this channel and they be making, they don't know my resume. Check my resume before you leave a comment because some dude was up there like, yeah, you know, he's right, but he looks like a lame that's paying for companionship. I'm like, you've not heard of disruptive mail. You've not seen all my receipts, bruh. I've gotten more pussy in a month than you got in your whole damn life, player. Player? So one of the things that I want you folks to understand is I'm about to stop playing around and I'm about to get serious and I'm going to be cutting off these haters, these punks, these moist dudes, these women all up in their feelings that are triggered because a dominant masculine man is telling them how it's going to be. <laughs> the orange Santa. 
Because one of the things I want you guys to understand, understand is um, you got to stop being average. You got to stop being average. Ariel, I'm about to destroy a lot of egos because people looking for the cheap rent. Here's what happens when you go for the cheap rent. You screw up your kids because you're picking your kids, low income friends for your kids. This is one of the things you're doing. I've talked about the culture. I've talked about this. Uh, this is why so many people love Omni and the Hellcat who a uh, recent video do game 65 pounds during COVID. If he ain't careful, he going to be dead in two in five or 10 years. If he ain't careful. That's too much weight for his height. That's way too much weight. It's too much weight. You know, thank for all the well wishes on Veterans Day. All right. Appreciate it. Spoke. One of the things that we need to do is parents need to do a better job of raising their children and not just go for the cheap rent because uh, I was having a conversation because, you know, with my foray into the sugar baby research, I've actually made a few friends and I was talking with one of my friends because she was telling me how this arrangement she was supposed to have just fell apart. And I was like, I'm telling you, most of the dudes on this site don't have any money. They don't have no money. They have no money. And, you know, she was just like, this dude bailed on her and all this other stuff. And I was like, hey, I told you. Your ex want that chicken in the fridge. <laughs> Y'all love that video about the hobo sexuals. The hobo sexuals are coming. The hobo sexuals are coming, man. Thank you, Rainy Woman. I mean, yeah, because, you know, I'm, I'm about to say something about to toot my own horn. I was raised right, but sometimes I like acting a fool, but I know what's right. And when I'm in a re relationship, I, te I treat my girl special. She gets gifts. I'm always doing stuff. I'm always on point. And, you know, some people don't know what good treatment is until it's gone. They don't know. The hobosexuals are coming, man. The hobosexuals, they are coming. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> he a big boy. Losers going to lose, man. They going to lose because one of the things that I want to speak on, females up in their feelings pretty much because this chick because see this is something that consistently used to happen with this channel that i would get a consulting and the dude would have a girl or a wife and it's like my wife don't like you my girl don't like you because see i'm instructing you and i'm teaching you and i'm training you how to do your thing and be a better man i'm giving you proper game I'm giving you realistic game and they don't like that because you gonna know. <laughs> You're going to be jumping past these homosexuals, the homosexuals. The numbers growing. John Gilbert, he gained 65 pounds during COVID. I lost a, oh, update. I'm doing something that's called alternate day fasting. Essentially one day I eat and one day I don't eat anything. I just have water liquid so today is the first month that i did it and i lost 14 pounds last month and i gained my muscles are coming back my muscles are coming back because uh once again this stuff is the truth perfect amino because it helps you maintain muscle mass. So I gained muscle and I lost 14 pounds of fat. Because essentially, I eat what I want to eat on my eating days. 
you know, I've kind of had to play around with it because it's kind of wild because during this whole thing, I've been weighing myself every day. And what happened is on my fasting days, I would lose. And then on my eat days, I would temporarily gain because in the beginning it was like, is this working? Because I would literally gain like 10 pounds. And then on my fasting days, I would drop it. So that was water weight. That wasn't actual weight. So what was happening is I would lose, then I would eat and gain and then I would lose. And each day it was getting lower and lower because I started this out at 274, 274, and now I'm 260 in 30 days. So I'm really eager to see what's going to happen the next 30 days, because if I lose another 10 pounds, that's going to put me at the 250. If I lose 12 pounds, that's going to put me at two in the 240s. And I got muscles. I got muscles coming back. My muscles are coming back because after the heart attack, man, working out was just it was trash. It was really, really trash. But now because essentially I want to be here a long time for you guys. I want to be able to talk smack to my haters and to the triggered women who get triggered by my truth. Uh. Like, let me go ahead and tell you the deal with Omni. Omni made a lot of money, but from a social economic standpoint and a culture standpoint, he's still a hood dude. This is why so many people like him because he's still a hood dude who thinks like a hood dude. He leveled up his money, but he did not level up his social status. Because, you know, big old gold chain, pendant, being up in the rap videos and stuff because he's still a hood dude. And once again, dude's got a prison record. Dude used to sell drugs. This is the story of the average person. Well, not every average person, but many average people. And think about all the men out here offering platitudes because the truth got smacked out of them when they're honest little children. This is true. Homosexuals was the business. It was funny. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed that video because it's true. And one of the things that's going to happen uh, right now, this is November and December and shortly will be in 2021. 2021 is going to be a bear of a year because, look, I predicted this in the live streams. The Democrats, they don't have the Senate yet. Uh, they may not get it. And if they don't have the Senate there will not be any generous stimulus package because that's what they were counting on. They were going to count on to get the presidency, the Senate, hang on to the House and then drop all kind of stimulus. And, you know, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Thank you. So one of the things, can women use what, rain and woman? Oh, if you meant alternate day fasting, yes. Uh, here on the YouTubes, there's this chick named Rachel Sharp. Check out her channel. And this girl used to be a chunky monkey. She's like 5'4", and she used to be 238. And the, the thing with Rachel, Rachel was always a pretty girl, even when she was fat. She she has a beautiful face. But you go ahead and look at what she used to look like and you check her out. Now you be trying to holler like Rachel, 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 because she's a cute little thing. But Rachel Sharp, there's another chick on here called Keto Rewind. And there's all kinds of stuff because there's a lot of science between behind alternate the day fasting. And, you know, I've been doing fasting since about 2016, but I was doing intermittent fasting where I would fast during the day and have like a four hour eat window. But now I've taken it to another level. Oh yeah. Cause uh, typically on my fast days, I do a 36 to 40 hour fast. And that's been working. Oh yeah. You can, yeah, you can use perfect amino. It's not for men. It's for anybody who wants it. <laughs> I ain't paying for nothing. Yeah, perfect amino, because if you go ahead and do some research on perfect aminos, it's the proper um, arrangement of essential amino acids that this allowed me to build muscle mass 
while losing 14 pounds of fat. I mean, like I was looking at my hands because a lot of my veins are starting to come out in my hands. Uh, I'm starting to get the vascularity back. So I'm very excited to see what the next 30 days are going to do with alternate day fasting. All right, John. All right. All right. What's up? The art of becoming more. <laughs> you know, Biden was flipping states like people were flipping dominoes. He flipped Georgia. I was like, whoa, he flipped Georgia. I weigh 260. Yeah, the, the perfect amino, because essentially what I do is take 10 of these before I work out on my workout days and I take five on a regular day because essentially this allowed me to that had disappeared because essentially during my heart attack, I lost all of my muscle and I lost some weight, but I was still fat. And my goal is by this time, um, like February, because in February, I should have lost about 30 pounds, which would put me at, you know, if I lose 10 pounds this month, that's going to put me at 250 and I lose 10 pounds uh, like 240s, 230s. My ideal goal is to be built like an NFL running back. And the best running backs are between like, you know, uh, Derrick Henry, he's like 238. I want to be built like that. Have the guns, have the cuts, get me a little six pack. You know, that's the goal I'm shooting for because I want to be here a long, long time. So I am currently weighing 260. During the heart attack, I got down to 245, but it was all muscle loss. You know, it was crazy. The alternate day fasting helped me get from 280 to 230. Yeah, it's very effective because, you know, it's, you know, uh, it's cool because you get to eat what you want because there's a whole cycle where there are no calories consumed. So you actually burn fat because you go into ketogenesis. All right, Roger. Fluid flows. Now nah, she gonna be gone. She gonna be good. FICO ten coming twenty twenty one. Yeah, FICO ten. They're gonna be able to look back twenty four months. So if you're doing credit repair, you need to hurry up. What's up from the ham Gwomware? What's up? No, I'm gonna keep it moving. I'm gonna keep it moving. I got, I got, I got some stuff in the works. That's the goal, man. That's the goal. All right, Jerry Westbrooks. It was the hammer. I don't know if it's BCA. I think it's EEA. Uh, go ahead and Google that. But this stuff is the truth. Yeah, because essentially um, many people, you, you can go ahead and look up alternate day fasting here on YouTube and many people will lose 10 to 12 pounds. I lost 14, almost 15, because, you know, depending on what I weigh tomorrow, but I've been working out. I've been on the treadmill. I've been doing ab work. So and one of the things is on your fasting days, you have so much energy. It is crazy. Okay. Hmm. All right. My mouse stopped working. That was interesting. Hmm. So I no longer have use of my mouse, so I cannot what come on all right there we go yeah alternate day fasting is true brad workouts working out super important as you age yes so uh, there's a guy here on youtube he's 80 years old he does crossfit grandpa doing crossfit 
<laughs> That's funny. Uh, the pallet industry. You know, people, the simplest industry. Yep. I've been mad. I've been fasting for 30 days. Today is my first 30 days of fasting. So I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, I'm also working on some other stuff. This is called. This is supposed to um, work on your arteries and stuff. This is supposed to clean out some stuff. So I'll I just started taking this so I can't really report on the effectiveness of it, but. You know, the, talking about money and, you know, my supplement bill is about 400 bucks a month for the stuff that I was taking that I'm getting ready to start taking. So health, because I was reading that Russell Wilson spends a million dollars a year on his body between uh, whatever therapies, his shelf and stuff, a million a year on his body. That's dope. That's crazy. Oh man. Oh, thank you. I do treadmill. So yeah, I do treadmill. I don't do jumping jacks and stuff like that. The story of average and what sense is if you do average people stuff, you're going to get average people results. Like everyone's trying to get cheap rent. That is bad for your children. When you go for a low income neighborhood and cheap rent, you're picking your children's friends. So all their friends are going to be lower economic status. This is why you should move to the most expensive neighborhood you could. I eat whatever I want. I don't really eat. You know, I just drink water. Now, one of the things there's 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 a way you could do called a modified alternate day fasting where, you, you know, I'll do a smoothie some days. I'll go get a tropical smoothie. But that's it in water. Well, I'm not on TRT. I still got my balls are still big. I still got big balls. So we will see. Yeah, that's going to come in Manifest Destiny. Uh, LeBron James spent 1.5. I mean, hey, they're making all this money with their bodies. It's a good investment. These parents are looking for cheapness over practicality as well as making children they can't afford, not knowing that each child they make has their own individual needs and making bad karma. Pretty much. Hey, I'm getting ready. Uh, yes, cyan pepper. I used to drink cyan pepper with some chamomile tea and with some honey. So I'm going to get back to that because I'm about to get back in all of my stuff. Uh, 100% agreed, Coastal Designer. 100% agreed. Because one of the things I want you guys to understand is you got to make money so you can invest in yourself. Because, you know, there's something in the hood called food deserts where these people can't get fresh foods, fresh fruits, fresh foods. It's really bad. I am 54. I just had a birthday. And, you know, uh, one of the issues that was freaking me out because for the longest time after the heart attack, I would work out and I, I just wasn't gaining strength. In the last four months, I've been gaining strength. My squats are back to almost 400. Uh, I'm benching like 275 and I'm doing curls. I got a very simple program I do. Uh, I do squats, deadlifts, calf raise uh, first day. Then the second day in the morning, I'll do chest and back. And then in the evening, I will do shoulders and arms and I'll take a day off. And that's been working out really well because I'm starting to see results. I'm starting. Thank you. I'm starting to see results because, you know, one of the things that, you know, you guys have got to understand is even though we have a pandemic, even though Trump lost, there's still a world of opportunity. And, you know, many people like I'm not trying to crap on your parents because they did the best they could, but they didn't know what they didn't know. 
and many parents have set their children up on bad paths. Many people. <laughs> yes, they do. The homosexuals do invest in their bodies. <laughs> so. The art of becoming more. This is very true. My parents purpose for the kids in certain environments to ensure we're exposed to the type of life they wanted for us and it worked. Yeah, because essentially this whole cheap rent thing is just a dagger of death to parents. Like, let's take um, the quarterback for the Chiefs. I can see his face. Hold on. Patrick Mahomes. That's his name. Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes was a little rich kid. And, you know, if you go ahead and look at all of the NFL quarterbacks, virtually all of them were in quarterback camps and training camps. And these camps were not cheap. Their parents spent that bread. If you look at, I mean, just go ahead, because essentially with YouTube, you will see these guys in the all American football teams in high school. These guys went to these camps. It's no accident. What you say about my mama? It's no accident that these guys are in the NFL. They've been training for this movement their whole life. Yeah, Trump lost. It's beneficial. Trump lost on election night. Because those electoral votes were not moving the way that he wanted them to. And Trump's talking about he's going to run again in 2024. I don't think so. I don't think so. But yeah, one of the things that has happened is a lot of people's parents have messed them up because once again, I'm not trying to crap on your parents. I'm just trying to let you know that if you are a parent, like going back to what the art of becoming more, you need to put your kids in positions to win. I honestly feel that I am where I'm at in life because my grandmother, who was like my mother, was college educated and she taught me to read. Because the other two, they're kind of like losers. And we came from the same household, but they did not get what I got because my grandmother died when I was 11 and they didn't get what I got. They did not get the template that I got. They, they didn't get it. And it's reflected in their lives. You, you strong, young man, Brad Woods, you strong. Victor Van Zimmy, a neighbor of mine has her home in foreclosure because her Amazon FBA business failed. Single mom with five kids. What have I been telling y'all about Amazon FBA for years? What have I been telling y'all? People like, go ahead and start an Amazon business and you're going to be able to let the money just come in while you sit back and not do that much. Victor, I'm not shocked. Amazon FBA has a 92% failure rate. Uh, some parents, uh, once again, uh, Cortez Baylor, I'm not letting them off that easy. If you have two people working, they're not managing and optimizing their money correctly because you got two incomes. They're doing stupid stuff. Lee, if you don't invest time in your children, it doesn't matter what neighborhood they grow up in. I'm going to agree and a little disagree because if your parents are absent type parents and you grow up in a rich neighborhood, who you socialize with and who you hang around with are going to be other little rich kids. And that's going to have a lifelong impact on you, whether your parents were active parents or absent. So I'm going to disagree with you a little bit on that because it, I, I live in a wealthy, I see how these kids get down. It's totally different. I don't really know what that's about, man. Camel's milk? You mean like from the camels in the desert? That kind of milk? 
pretty much these camps are the truth. Thank you for the $5 super chat. Yeah, the true parents. Because see, my grandmother had a plan for me. And it worked. Yep, Patrick Mahomes was a little rich kid. Malik, my mom started to hear that. Single was basically homeless throughout my teens. We're always living with people because of our bad choices in life. It definitely has an effect on me in life. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's real. Fluid flows the dads of Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton. I love that brother. Tiger, the Jacksons, Williams Systems. All positioned them to win. And they all consider this grace in their craft. Because they had an active, engaged father. 100%. 100%. Pretty much Steve Jameson. You know, these guys are in these camps. All right, Malik. Quinn Jackson, my parents would spend the money to rent houses in the best neighborhoods they could afford. Yet I saw many black kids whose parents spent money on luxury cars and clothes and living in the hood. I'm going to tell you all a story. I was living in this boarding house. There was this guy named Jafar. And we were kind of cool because we were kind of like two normal dudes in the dysfunctional boarding house. And Jafar went and spent 1500 bucks on a leather Pelly Pelly jacket. He put the jacket in layaway and I went one and one day we were hanging and he made a payment on his jacket. You living in a boarding house, dude. And you going to spend $1,500 on a leather jacket? Insanity, man. Insanity. Insanity. Scruffy, and you need to start with stuff that you're very interested in. The kids also ate free lunch. I used to hate that. Uh, Dale, I am born and raised in the Bronx. My son lives and has grown up in an affluent neighborhood. My son is definitely different. Not growing up like I did and his friends have a different reality. Exactly. This is what, this is what I'm screaming. It's a different groove. David, exactly. You become what you're around. Michael Jordan grew exactly around the time his older cousins came to stay with him. His cousin was like six, five. A lot of people don't realize Good Lord, man. You went to 18 schools? I'm so sorry. I mean, a lot of parents hold their children back intentionally because they don't want their kids to do better than they did. Gwen Jackson had not been for my father and mother getting married. My mom would have raised me in the hood and that'd probably be a statistic. Hey, it's truth, truth. Spiritual wealthy. Despite your upbringing, once you become an adult and awaken this up to you, is how you end. The underdog still wins. Not exactly. Statistically, whatever social economic circle you were born in is the one you're more likely going to die in. So that's not true. That's not true at all. The underdog can win, but the underdog usually doesn't win. All right, formerly known as Trav, do it, man, do it. <laughs> Pretty much. My mother bought and moved into an upper middle class neighborhood in this community. All the kids attended college. This was a drastic difference from where we lived and it changed my life pretty much. Makes a huge difference. Huge difference. Lee, this is one of the common trites. All right. Listen to me. I live in a wealthy neighborhood. I am around these kids. The majority of them don't have drug problems. 
the majority there might be a few but the majority of them don't have drug and legal problems and there might be some because the dad got bread that gets off but the fact is the majority of these kids are innocent sheltered and protective this is something that poor people say to as an excuse to not work hard and to get wealthy like i get wealthy my kids are going to be messed up it ain't true I, i'm telling you because i live in the million dollar neighborhood i'm telling you what i see listen to someone who's in the house not someone on the outside like making assumptions like you just did like I, i'm here to tell you um uh, there was a chick in my neighborhood i bought some bar stools from and i did some research and her whole network was these little freshly washed upper middle class kids her whole network it ain't true stop that just stop that that's funny one out of a thousand wealthy kids might have a problem pretty much the wealthy kids are going to become your doctors your attorneys your cpas your corporate presidents that's because they're in that line thank you stefan thank you this is true there's always exceptions spiritually wealthy i was not listen to what i said if you've been watching this i had a college educated mother Bring me up to when I was 11. Listen to what I'm saying. I did not grow up, quote, in a single parent household, even though I had two female parents. My grandmother was my mother, a college educated woman, raised me up, taught me how to read. So I wasn't, quote, an underdog. I just took a little time for me to get my stuff together. Because if my grandmother wasn't in my life, I wouldn't be where I'm at. If my grandmother wasn't in my life, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> you know what's funny about my ex? I would order stuff and I would go in the refrigerator. She, she was a hungry little woman. She was a hungry little woman. She'd be eating up all the stuff. Pretty much. All right, raining woman, that's what I'm screaming. That's what I'm screaming. You don't want to be average. You don't want to be average. Pretty much. At least that's television. Rich kids are super nice people. I've been around them. Like Once again, see, this, this is one of the things. I'm giving you intel from inside the house. And people want to fight with me based upon assumptions i'm telling you uh right here there's a restaurant around the corner and there's a high school that's a highly re regarded high school around the corner and all of the mothers were at this restaurant because they had this event at the high school and all i saw in the parking lot was mercedes suvs big yukons range rovers these were women that were well taken care of and pampered and raising their children. It was the middle of the day and they were in there eating and networking and politicking and talking about their kids. A lot of women in this neighborhood don't work because they don't have to because Big Daddy bringing in the bread. I'm here to tell you, I am inside the house and I'm telling you these assumptions that y'all coming up with are just that, assumptions. Just assumptions. They're not grounded in reality. Pretty much. Environment is stronger than will. You, Kirk Johnson, that's 100% true. That's it. Lee, I'm telling you. All right, let me give you, let me go ahead and throw this in your face. George Bush was a C student, right? But he grew up wealthy. And what happened to George Bush? He became president of the United States. You can keep coming up with all this, all oh, this other stuff to make yourself feel better about being average. But I'm here to tell you, it don't get down like that. Then if your mom's a dentist, why are you sitting here trying to fight? Did your mom neglect you? Did your mom not hug you enough? 
Because if your mom's a dentist and you lived in the upper middle class neighborhood, you know what I'm talking about. Trey Nino, um, y'all keep saying that the, the upper class are messing up and don't have directions. All right. I ain't seeing it, and I live in a rich neighborhood. I'm just not seeing this. I have seen these kids. I talk to them, the, my kids' neighbors. I'm not seeing this. I mean, this is a fantasy that poor people keep telling themselves, oh, the rich kids are messed up. They're becoming your doctors, your attorneys, your lawyers, your judges. That's who's in line to become the people who going to judge you and employ you. It ain't no new day. This is old as time itself. The rich get richer. The rich do better. The rich have more opportunities. The rich can make mistakes and bounce back because they're rich. I'm like, you hood motherfuckers with this hood stuff. I'm like, oh, they ain't no better. Statistically, you're wrong. You're just wrong. Environment determines 75 to 80% of the outcome because it shapes 80 to 90% perspective. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, that's one of the things. That, that's hood rich. We're going to sell grandma's house to get this cash so we can buy a BMW. Man, that's crazy. Respecting boundaries, team building exercises, example of success, networking, social proof comes with influence all day long. The real bro. Oh my God. I live in a wealthy neighborhood and maybe she's talking about the other neighborhoods. I worked in the other day and they were doing drugs and having sex in the bathroom in middle school. Those kids were wilding out. <laughs> Those kids were wilding out. The wealthy kids. There are some wealthy kids on drugs. Yeah, some. Not most. Like most poor kids are not on drugs. There's only a certain sector of people on drugs unless they're like the generational poor white people of West Virginia. Like there's this video on YouTube, the wonderful whites of West Virginia. Drug use, out of wag lot births, criminality, prison records, poverty, generational poverty. And these are white people. Uh, I don't think Moline is the richest country county in America. Uh, I would say you're wrong there. One of the richest counties in America is in California. The richest cities in America are in California. I've checked this, so that's not correct. I know it's the difference between broke drunk and rich drunk. What's the difference, man? <laughs> Jay lives, they give you the real game. Yep, yep, yep. True. It makes a, a big difference. It makes a big difference. The spook who sat by the door, pretty much. The art of becoming more years as a chance will have issues, but I went to school and lived in the upper class neighborhoods and that average experience had nothing to do with drugs. Like I said, I keep telling them it's yeah, there, you might have a kid here and there doing drugs. It happens, but the majority of them are not doing drugs and wilding out. And also for having sex, millennials in the generation after them are not having sex as much as their parents did. So these could have been the wild kids of the school. The time your government spent on you outweighs the money spent on you. I grew up in a wealthy family, wealthy school, wealthy neighborhood. Uh, once again, my grandmother invested in me. She taught me how to read. She taught me to have a passion for books. And I'm like, let's go ahead and say if the kids around the corner, their parents are not invested in them. They're still going to have a better outcome than someone born in the hood. Just because of the proximity of being in this neighborhood. Like. I can run into someone in the in the in the Whole Foods and have a business conversation. This happens all of the time because I live in this neighborhood. 
Uh, rich people are nothing like you. They're nothing. That that's a, that's a misnomer. I mean, the network is totally different. Like these mothers who were in that restaurant, the language and the stuff. Because I could tell. Because see, you know, there there there's a certain sign of wealth. Because one of the biggest things you see consistently is these big ass wedding rings, the bling bling. You see that all day long. Man, I'm not sleeping, but uh, all right. Omni and the Hellcat had money for five years and he lost it because he elevated from because I ain't sleeping. I'm just telling you the truth. The average kid from the hood is not going to get rich. These are statistical facts. You can look it up. I ain't sleeping. I'm just saying the truth because many of y'all and this is one of the reasons that people love Omni and the Hell Track is he's they look like I could be Omni when actually more than likely you can. I mean, Trey Nino, are you a millionaire? All right, no kids. That's a good thing. Most of us talked about extracurricular activities, upcoming trips, going to Europe alone at 16 for the summer was like a rite of passage and plans for high school. I'm telling you, the art of becoming more, they, they're not hearing me. They want to be stuck on this, this, well, you know, I'm coming from the hood. I'm going to become rich. Hood rich. Let's see. I hate when they do these websites like this. The 10th richest city in, is Virginia. Ninth is Morris County, New Jersey. Eighth is Los Amos, New Mexico. Seventh is New Jersey. Sixth is Douglas County, Colorado. Fifth is Arlington, Virginia. Fourth is Falls Church, Virginia. Three is Howard County, Maryland. Second is Fairfax County, Virginia, and number one, Luton County, Virginia. So if you're in one of those areas, the 10 richest counties in America, when was this? This was 2018. So I stand corrected. This is, but I didn't see McLean on that list. Curse of different strokes. Danger zone. <laughs> All right. Then you actually, I got a question for you, uh, Lee. Did you expire, have hood aspirations? Because I have a friend who was in Virginia. I forget where she was. And she was a full bird colonel in the military. And the neighborhood she lived in, I saw similar things I see in my neighborhood. So, I don't know. Of course, this is one of the things I'm screaming. Like, okay, all you people who embrace good culture and ghetto culture because it makes you feel good. I'm here to tell you it ain't true. I'll have to look harder. I'm in the neighborhood full of rich kids. I see it every day. I mean, th these notions that the rich kids um, are going to do bad, statistically, it does not bear out. <laughs> Y'all can argue with me this because you're in your hood feelings. She's in the danger zone. <laughs> you need me a big daddy? I'm sorry your mother neglected you. Oh, I'm I'm saying some stuff that's a feeling you because you just arrived. Now, I've been rich for 20 years. I didn't just get here. I just started showing y'all. I've been here for a minute. 
I've been making six to seven figures for 20 years. I ain't just arrived. Spoken like someone in their feelings. Apparently, I got you in your feelings. You don't sound like a rich kid. You sound like you upset. Did your mother hurt your feelings because she neglected you? And you just hate the fact that I'm telling truth because if you're truly a rich kid, then you know what I'm talking about to be true. And you just up in your feelings. And I think Lee needs to get some therapy. I'm not trying to be funny, but seriously, I think you need to get some therapy. Pretty much. Drugs take away wealth. Most rich kids don't do drugs from my experience. Pretty much. I came from a third world country at 10 year olds. We were po. Today I have a net worth much higher than white folks. I mastered money management from my mom. That's the ticket. What makes rich people different? If all right, let's talk about the environment. When you grow up in an environment full of abundance, Patrick Mahomes was a little rich kid. He's a Super Bowl winning NFL quarterback. You're starting to see that the sons of former NFL stars are getting in the NFL. They're getting these contracts because they were groomed from birth. What makes rich people different is money gives you options. When you broke, you don't have no options. That's a huge difference right there. I mean, for you even ask that question, what makes rich people different? Like, you know, he just got a little more money than me. no. And this is something else, too, for you MGTOW and Red Pill men. If you have money when you get married, you have an 80% success rate with your marriage. 80%. West Virginia is no joke. Well, environment makes a big difference, man. <laughs> Steve Jameson. We came out the I like because you know people on this things. This is what I see. Their the moms were able to stay home with their kids, and invest time in their children. This is what I see all day in this neighborhood. These moms don't work. Trey Nino, I don't talk down. I tell your ignorant dumb ass the truth. And because you are steeped in hood culture, you don't want to hear it and you don't want to acknowledge it. I'm not talking down to your monkey ass. I'm telling your monkey ass the truth and you can't deal with the truth because you a weak little bitch. There. Money does matter. I mean, money makes a big difference. You, we're going to disagree on that all day. It was a gradual movement because once again, I started to get in environments, once again, environments that made a huge difference. Like anyone that thinks that I'm talking down to you because I'm using certain terminology, I'm telling your monkey ass the truth. You are a weak little bitch that's going to stay where you want to be in life because you can't deal with the truth. Because here's the thing. I can say what I want on the YouTubes, but life is going to handle you much more harshly than I can. And I don't give a good goddamn if you don't like it because you want to embrace hood culture, be all surrounded in hood culture and ghetto culture and think that shit is great. It's fucking stupid. It's dumb. But no, you can't tell you ignorant motherfuckers that because you was a, I won't get me a Hellcat. I'm going to be. Just ignorant, just ignorant, ignorant, ignorant. Thank, thank you, AC. The hood is not the prize, folks. Let's stop holding it up as the one. Thank you. Oh, my delivery is, I'm going to tell you the truth. 
I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to pat you on the back and tell you that it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. No, because see, people need to hear the truth from someone who has made it and knows what it takes to make. You got to leave this hood ghetto bullshit alone. Because, you know, all you folks who feel that I'm talking down to you are mentally weak and you cannot, you know, I don't have to speak kindly or softly to you to educate you. If you don't want to be educated, stay there. Yes, this is what I'm saying. The first few years, like my grandmother, I'm like, it's very critical. All right, Donnie Briscoe. The thing is, money gives someone with a brain the freedom to properly structure their child's life. Glenda, I feel like it plays to the notion that money is bad. So those who have it must be bad. The art of becoming more, I can't agree with you even more. Because I had all kinds of folks telling me when I moved out here that white folks going to do all this other stuff. I've had some of the best experiences in my life. Mr. Short Dollars, this is the ticket. You've got to make good decisions. This is the ticket. Quinn Jackson, this is the thing because I've had this. You talk down to people because I tell people the truth and like Trey Nino I, I, I'm pretty much hurt his little feelings because there's this false presumption and you can fact check me this statistically a child born in the hood is going to grow up and be poor and die poor statistically you may have a few exceptions who will get out but the reality is and I don't care I don't give a good goddamn if you don't like my delivery fuck you you don't like my delivery because you ain't a man. You cannot have a man tell you the truth. This is one of the things in my generation. The drill sergeants used to put hands on people in basic training. This was a, you know, this generation is soft. It is soft. It is moist. Oh, he's talking down to me because he's telling me the truth. <laughs> he's telling me the truth. He's talking down to me. Now, I'm trying to train your monkey ass to be a man versus a soft little bitch. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to pull the man out of you and push the bitch out of you. But it's hard because you want to cling to that little bitch because your mom was a bitch and she was a hoe. And that's what you groomed up and you didn't see no real men working. So that's how because your mom got down like that. That's how you going to get down. I'm so sick of you weak, feminine men. And I understand why a lot of women out here are lost because there are no leaders. There are no warriors. There are they're, they're some. I should say there are some, but there, there needs to be more versus you weak ass men who claim and hold on to the ghetto as if it's something special. Talking down. I just talked down to your monkey ass. I hope you hurt me. I hope you hurt me, boy. Because you act like a little child. We're sitting here. I'm trying to give you some good games so you can level up your life so you can become better. And you want me to sugarcoat it and to pat you on the back and tell you fantasies. The reality is if you're born in the hood, more than likely you're going to die in the hood. There will be a few lucky people to escape the hood, but the majority are going to stay in the hood. They're going to die in the hood and they're going to have all type of hood afflictions. This is reality. It's reality. I mean, like, I, I get tired. I have no patience for idiots and dumb motherfuckers. I have no patience for that stuff. Talking down to people. When did telling people the truth talks down to people? You know, if I got you triggered, that's good. Maybe that'll move your monkey ass to action. Maybe that will. Maybe they'll move your monkey ass to man. Maybe you'll become up and become a man versus a little weak little bitch. I'm sitting here educating. I'm putting stuff up here. I'm displaying my life. I'm trying to show you the way. And you motherfuckers are fighting me because you want to cling to the hood. It's something special. 
like it's something special. You are an ignorant motherfucker if you think the hood culture is special and the hood culture does good things for black folk. You are dumb as a pile of bricks if you think that shit's good. Let that shit go. Let it fucking go. I'm like, I get sick of this shit. Because I'm supposed to sit up here and tell you fairy tales like all these other YouTubers and make you 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 better. No, I, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to um, piss around because, see, time is wasting. Time is wasting. All right. I've been here longer than I mean it to. I'm, I'm, I'm all angry and stuff now. So I'm going to say for those of you who want to level up and who want to get out the hood, go below and get into enrolled in the corporate toolbox. And we're going to teach you how to become a corporate citizen because I got some videos that are going to be dropping on Savage Finance. They're going to be a little different. I think you're going to love them. And we're going to work on getting rich together. That's my goal. My goal is to create 5,000, 50,000 corporate citizens in the next five years to get more people here to leave all this ghetto bullshit behind it's bullshit it's bullshit and anyone that's embracing or worshiping hood culture is a fucking dumbass and idiot there i said it and if you felt i was talking down to you maybe you needed to hear this message maybe you need to get in maybe you need to get in your feelings maybe you can't sleep tonight because I'm roasting motherfuckers tonight. I'm not dealing with this dumb shit talking down. Boy, if you were a man, you would respect this, but maybe you don't have enough T levels in you. Maybe you got too much estrogen in you. So, all right. I will see you guys later. You have a good one.